It is time for us to explore a little bit of local history. And, of course, we do that with Harold Peacock from History Out There, who's got a very unique story this morning. Good morning, Harold. Uh, yes, good morning, Damo. Yeah, everyone's talking about the cost of electricity. But what about the price you pay if you get struck by lightning? That's well, what I want to tell you about. It might be cheaper than the electricity company, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and it might not hurt as much. But yeah, anyway, we'll talk right. about that. <laughs> exactly. So this is about uh, lightning strikes across the Warwick District. Yeah, it's not necessarily a laughing matter because over a century ago, there were horrible deaths from lightning strikes all around Warwick and the Darling Downs. And for one man, it might have actually been a merciful way to go. Oh. Yeah, you see, in 1907, well, I'll start with a few, but in 1907, an orphan boy, Herbert Webb, he was aged 18, was killed by lightning while planting corn at Emuvale. Now, the lightning struck him in the head, singeing his hair, travelled down the left side of his body, scorching his clothing, and down to his feet, which were badly burned, and blew off his boots. Now, young Herbert was buried at Warwick Cemetery without anyone ever knowing the name of his parents, so it was very sad. Yeah. Yeah, and then then, uh, a bit more recently, in 1915, Thomas Hugh Welsh, a farmer from Juricon on the Inglewood line, was struck dead by lightning. Now, Welsh was out fishing when a storm rolled in, so he set off for home. But before he got far, he was struck by lightning and killed. He left a widow and three children, the youngest of whom was only 10 days oh, old. terrible. Now, yeah, and look, he was a grandson and great-grandson of sea captains. So, Damo, I know what you're thinking, that this only proves that, yet again, water and electricity don't mix. That's true. Yeah, I knew you were thinking that. But also, there were two men struck and killed on the same day in different instances on the 21st of November in 1920. William Thomas Steele, he was killed by lightning at Wheatvale, just west of Warwick. He was struck while standing on a dray, loading up with wheat sheaves. Lightning killed Steele, set fire to the wheat, and the horses bolted. The the same day at Southbrook near Pittsworth, John Anderson was also fatally struck by lightning. There was no rain when a flash of lightning came out of the blue, instantly killing Anderson and the horse he was riding, making it painfully seen that he had indeed been called to God. But in 1923, Thomas Burke was struck and killed by lightning near Yangon, just outside of Warwick. Now, he took shelter under a tree. A few moments later, the tree was struck and Burke was killed instantly. His mother, Joanna, from County Tipperary in Ireland, never recovered from the shock of her son's electrifying death, and she herself died just months later. Now, Burke had sheltered under the tree with a younger man, and his name was William Henry Mausch. Now, Mausch had a brother, Herbert, who had served in the army during the First World War. Herbert had been killed in action at Hellfire Corner on Menon Road in 1917. After he turned his horses about and rode into intense cell fire to help a fallen mate. But he himself was then blind to bits. Oh. Another brother, Ivan, would die suddenly of heart failure in 1940 while serving the army in the early days of the Second World War. But back to our William Mausch, who, who was sheltering under that tree. Now, Welsh was worried that it wasn't safe under the tree, as we know, and so he left just moments before the lightning strike. And even so, Mausch was rendered unconscious and paralysed in one arm and both legs. Oh. He, he recovered, but only for an even worse fate to await. You see, in 1937 at Gundawindi, he met a terrible death. Mouse had worked late one night and was locking up his cordial factory. That's when neighbours living 200 yards away heard fearful screams and a thud, thud, thud coming from the factory. Rushing to the scene, they found Mouse dead and his body shockingly mutilated. His clothes had got caught in the machinery building and he was being hurled round and round, smashing into a heavy crossbeam on every turn. Oh. And now look, four years later, the factory itself suffered an unceremonious death, because it was uh, was in Bowen Street in Gundawindi, and it was completely cut up by fire. Exploding tubes of ammonia kept a large crowd of onlookers at a safe distance, and spelled the end of any lasting memorial to Willie Mausch. But you've got to feel for Minnie Mausch, she was the mother of those three young men from Yangon. It all proved too much for Minnie, who not long after the death of her third son, she passed away herself. Yeah. Now, given the way two of the Mouse brothers died, 
you've got to think that maybe being struck by lightning would have been a small mercy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to feel Ele- electricity. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, some families just don't have any luck, do they? Oh, look, it's, it's, it's very sad. But, look, even if you're thinking of the cost of living and the cost of electricity, things can always be worse, can it? It certainly can, mate. Appreciate the story, and uh, we look forward to doing it again next week. You have a tremendous week. Oh, look, I'm looking forward. So I'm going to warm up. I'm going to go for a run right now in this fog. Well, good luck, and um, <laughs> make sure you take your umbrella with you, all right? I will. <laughs> all right. There he is, Harold uh, Peacock, uh, joining us there. And if you'd like to read back on that story or any of the others, uh, Harold puts them up on his website, History Out There, and you can read all about our local history. It's a great read, let me tell you. Uh, so check it out, historyoutthere.com. All right, we're going to take a break. Back with more in a moment.